For as long as the automobile has been around, humans have used it for competition, risking life and limb to prove that they are faster than the other guy. The concept sounds dumb, but you should see what the Dutch have done to it. But anyway, before Formula 1 was a thing, Grand Prix racing was still taking place throughout Europe, with notable drivers including Rudolf Caracciola, Bernd Rosemeyer, and Tazio Nuvolari. But there was another driver who stood out from the rest, popular with politicians and with Mercedes-Benz, and his name was Dick Seaman. Okay, 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 so his full name is Richard John Beatty Seaman. Although the nickname Dick was often adopted in the place of Richard. Something Will Buxton explained while talking about Formula 2 driver, Richard Tickton. But getting back on track here, who was Seaman? And what did Seaman do? Well, he was born in 1913, in the cathedral city of Chichester, and was born into wealth, to a point where he received a country house for his 20th birthday. He took an interest in cars from a young age, and knew that he found his passion in life. After completing his studies in 1934, Seaman decided decided that becoming a racing driver was what he wanted to do, and began his venture by winning the Voiturette race of the Swiss Grand Prix. He would win a few more of these Voiturette races, including the Copper Acrobo twice, Czech Grand Prix, the Swiss Grand Prix two more times, the JCC 200 miles, Donington Grand Prix, and the Isle of Man. Despite his success, Seaman's mother Lillian was concerned about her son's safety in the sport. Not content with him endangering his life in a car, she bought him a plane to encourage him to give up racing. The ruse worked until he used it to fly to South Africa to race in the National Grand Prix. After having come to accept Dick's will to race, his mother bought him a works ERA racer. In 1936, Seaman was unbeatable, and this caught the eye of the Mercedes team chief and lard enthusiast, Alfred Neubauer. Neubauer invited Seaman to the Nürburgring for a trial, and was eventually signed to the Silver Arrows team for 1937. This was quite a coup for Seaman, although his mother was totally against the idea. And there was a good reason for this. Back in those days, both Mercedes and Auto Union were subsidised by the German government, who used motor racing as a tool of propaganda, building faster, more advanced, more reliable machinery than what any other country could throw at them. But given this was 1937, I probably don't need to tell you which party was in power at the time. But whatever the case, Seaman was now in machinery which would give him a chance to win Grand Prix. He made his debut for the team in 1937 at the German Grand Prix. However, he would retire on lap 6 after after colliding with Ernst von Delius. He would achieve his first finish later that year at the Italian Grand Prix, finishing fourth and ahead of the likes of Giuseppe Farina and Tazio Nuvolari. It was in 1938, however, where Dick Seaman would show his speed. On his return to the Nürburgring, Seaman would take victory with a commanding drive, achieving fastest lap for good measure. The 300,000 strong crowd applauded his victory and was presented with a large laurel wreath by... Uh, uh, but let's not get into the sticky world of Siemens politics, and instead focus on his abilities as a driver. At the Swiss Grand Prix that same year, Seaman took pole position, posted the fastest lap, and very nearly won the race. He would retire from the Italian Grand Prix with engine failure, but it was nonetheless a valiant effort from the Briton. And it was at this time that the likes of Nuvolari and Caracciola were starting to look at him as a threat. By the end of 1938, Seaman had married Erika Pop, daughter of the director of BMW. Brave, young, newly married, and on top of the world, Seaman travelled to the spa francorchamps circuit for the opening round of the 1939 European Championship. However, this would be his last event. Starting from 5th place, Seaman was making good headway after the retirements of Caracciola and Farina. However, on lap 21, he crashed in between Clubhouse Corner and La Source. The fuel line broke, which sprayed fuel all over the car. With his right hand broken, he was trapped in the fire, and was eventually freed by a brave Belgian soldier. With burns all over his body and in agonising pain, he remarked to Rudy all Hort, chief engineer of Mercedes Racing, that he was going too fast for the conditions and that it was entirely his own fault. And eventually he succumbed to his injuries, passing away at the age of 26. Oh boy, that went dark real fast. So what do we take from all of this? Put aside his funny name, his questionable taste in politics for the time, how did he compare as a driver? Well, despite his limited running in the European Championship, he still achieved fastest laps, pole positions, and Grand Prix victories. Even at the age of 26, those more experienced were worried about the pace of Seaman. The fact that Mercedes-Benz still tend to his grave today tells you all you need to know about his legacy as a driver, and that really is all he should be remembered for. Thank you for watching. Please consider liking this video and subscribing. Drop a comment below. And remember, keep it respectful, be wholesome, don't be a manus, and as always, I'll see you all later.